Hello, welcome. This is a hands-on tutorial to get you started using Microsoft Fabric. We're going to load a CSV file of data into Fabric into the lake house as a table. We're going to use data flows to do that and we're going to clean the data along the way. We're going, once we've got it in our lake, we're going to look at it in uh, with SQL queries. We'll have a look at the data model, perhaps build a measure and finally build this Power BI report. So to quickly show you the stages, this is the data flow that we'll be building, Power Query on the web. We'll have the data in the lake here. Once we've done that, we can write this SQL query here. We'll look at the data model here and finally build our report. The data that you need is public data, one file. There's a link to it in the web. Just grab that and I hope you that you will follow along. Just a quick note about the data, our sample data we'll be looking at. It's uh, public data originally sourced from the UK Land Registry. It's uh, a set of data about property sales. We have the price in column A, uh, the date of the transaction, some information about the property and some geographical information. We're looking at it in Excel here, but it's actually a CSV file. You will need access to a fabric capacity to follow along. Uh, as of this recording, May 2023, there's a 60 day free trial. Full details about how to do that in the comments below and links. It only takes about a minute to set up. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a workspace, an area where I can put my fabric artifacts, my lake houses, my reports and so on. To do that, I'm going to click on workspaces. I'm going to choose a new workspace and create it. Now let's add a lake house to our newly created workspace. I'm going to click on new, show all, choose lake house. Give it a name, create it. And here we see our lake house. We've empty at the moment. Files as the unmanaged area. Tables where our data will go will be the managed area. Let's go back to our workspace and we can see that we've got the newly created lake house here. We've also got a SQL endpoint that we'll be able to write SQL queries against our data and also our data set for preparing data in Power BI. Now let's create a data flow to import our data and to clean it up. I'm going to import from a text file. I'm going to pass in the URL. It's in the uh, link in the comments below. Now I've already created this connection, but simply you'll come in and do create a new connection. Uh, no data gateway anonymous. I've already done that in a rehearsal. So I'll just click on next. And we can see a preview of the data. I'm going to click on create. And for Power BI users, we're now in familiar territory. This is very similar to Power Query in Power BI Desktop, uh, data flows of Power Query on the web. Now let's clean up the data in, in a few ways. We're going to add a column. We're going to merge a few other columns. We're going to filter a few rows. We're going to rename a column and its values. But first, a slightly technical thing, I'm going to come to this transaction date column and I'm going to choose it from a date to change it from a date to a date time. It just happens that um, date flows at the moment can't deal with just dates, so change to a date time. Now let's add a column. I'm going to base it on the transaction date. I'm going to add a column. I'm going to use dates to bring back the year of the transaction date. Later on, I want to group it by year. There we have all the years. I'm going to change that to a whole number and I'm going to call it transaction year. Now I'm going to filter a few rows. I'm going to come to property type here. We've got five different types. I'll load some more so we can see them all. D is attached, F is flat, O is other, S is semi, T is terraced, O are for garages and buildings, they're not kind of living spaces, so I'm going to remove those. Next, I'm going to merge a few columns. Um, I'm going to take these and I'm going to merge them all. And I will merge them with a space and just call the newborn address. And there we see our merged column. 
Finally, I'm going to rename this column is new build. That's not the best name. I'll call it old or new build to more meaningful. I'll replace the values. So that would become old build and or existing build. And I'll replace the Y's so that they become new build. And now I've cleaned my data. Finally, we need to specify that our lake house is going to be the destination for this data. We can do it on the ribbon here or also down, down here. I'll click on add data destination in the ribbon and I am going to use my lake house. I click on next. I'm going to choose the lake house in my fabric lesson open workspace. That's my property sales lake. Click on next. The mapping looks good, so I'll save my settings. And finally, I'll publish this data flow. Our data flow is called data flow free. That's not the best name. So I'll come in and I'll change the name to something a bit more useful. Finally, we've published our data flow, but we need to refresh the data in there. I'm going to come and click on the refresh now button. Our data flow has finished refreshing. So now we can click on the lake house and we can see that we have our table in the table section and it's our transform data. I can also click on these three dots here and show view files. And what that shows me that underlying the data is what's called a set of parquet files. Now let's change from the lake house view and switch to the SQL endpoint view. We can see the data again now as a SQL table. I'm going to click here to add a pane where I can write a new SQL query. Here it is, and I'm going to run it. This looks at the total sales and the total market value by year. Now, if we look down here, we can also see that we can go to the Power BI model pane. And what I'm going to do is actually create a new measure to this default data set. I'm going to call it number of sales and I'm going to make it equal to uh, the count rows of the table. Each sale is a row, so counting the rows counts the number of sales. Finally, I'm going to come over here and use this button to create a new report. Here is our familiar Power BI report view. I'll go to the data view and expand the pivot list. I'll start off by choosing a column chart and I'll put the price on that against the transaction year. And maybe I'll filter that so that the transactions years are greater than 2019. I'll apply the filter. And lastly, I'll put my property type, actually I'll put my old and new build on the legend there. Finally, I'll come down here I'll create my line chart again. I'll look at my number of sales measure this time, the one I've just created, and I'll look at it by transaction year. And we might have a look at it for each of our different property types. I'll save my report as property sales analysis. And I'm done. This is the first in a series of practical hands-on short tutorials introducing Fabric, especially for people who are familiar with Power BI, that's people who know how to build Power BI reports, maybe a bit of DAX, use Power Query, but are not yet familiar with some of the other capabilities that are part of Fabric, such as Python or Spark or SQL. In our next video, we are going to be doing a similar sort of thing. We're going to load data into Fabric, but this time we're going to use a short, simple Python script. If you're not familiar with Python, don't worry, because I will explain the script every bit of the way and provide the script for you as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know if there's any particular topics that you want to hear about in this series. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next video.